Good morning. So lately I've been playing a bit with these pre-strung tiles provided by Zentangle. Um, you can purchase them on the Zentangle website and you get 24 individually pre-strung tiles with all kinds of different strings, a wide variety. So it's been really fun to to play around with these different strings. A few of the tiles I've made using these strings um, have been using color. I've been very interested in color lately. Um, yesterday I, I laid the groundwork for, for this one to be tangled. So um, I'm finding that working with color, especially right now when I'm not spending as much time outdoors or outside of my home, um, there's definitely an element of, of color therapy going on here and, and art therapy going on here. Um, and, I, and I really love and appreciate the opportunity to also connect with um, the Zentangle community. So, so today we're going to go ahead and take a look at this string here. And I'm going to be using my Derwent watercolor pencils um, to lay down some color for each of these sections within the tile. And we'll just see how it goes. We'll sort of um, improvise a little bit with these watercolors. So I think I'll start sort of in the middle. Um, and I'm, I'm starting with sort of a purple color and just gently in like small circles and, and quite light not pressing very hard. I'm not as light as possible either, but I'm not really pressing too hard on on my pencil. Just laying down some watercolor. Now some of these, I think, some of these sections, I'll want them to be perhaps all one color. And then other sections, I'm thinking it would be nice for the section to shift from one color to the next. As I get closer to the center of the section, I am lightening a bit on how hard I press with my watercolor pencil. I really like these, um, these watercolor pencils. I've been enjoying them for quite some time. And um, I love just sort of the gentle I'm, I'm interested in vivid colors every once in a while as well, but sometimes I just want a nice, gentle color. So, um, so these watercolor pencils are great for this. So I think for this one, I do think I want to add a second color. I'm going to go ahead with a sort of a lighter blue um, on this other side here. And so when we add our water, um, you'll see that these two colors they sort of shift from one to the other. And I, I kind of want to leave <clears throat> towards the center of this section a bit more white to make it appear like there's a bit of a shine there. <clears throat> and I'm going to let the, the blue and the purple mingle a little bit <clears throat> to help with the a little bit of um, blending. Now this white space won't be as large, large once we add our, our water in there. It'll fill in a little bit. All right, let's go to another section. Thinking this next one right here. I'm going to start off with this orange color. Now, one of the things that um, I tend to do, whether I like it or not, um, is to use complementary colors uh, to create contrast. <clears throat> so blue and orange are complementary colors, blue being the primary color and orange being the secondary color that does not contain blue and therefore creates the most contrast, um, which is why it's called a, a complementary color. <clears throat> I tend to do that. I tend to like contrast um, even when I'm going for sort of a more gentle <laughs> feel. I, I don't know. I just lean toward 
choosing contrasting colors. And I think I'll do the same here with <clears throat> the purple. So when I shift to the other side, purple's complementary color is yellow. Yellow being the primary color and purple being the secondary color that does not contain yellow. <clears throat> that way we have a nice contrast between the yellow here um, and the purple in that first section. <clears throat> I'm still working on, on getting a bit more creative with my watercolor pencils. I tend to just like to stick with sort of rainbow colorish shades. Uh, and I don't do as much blending. Sometimes I do. Um, that one of the tiles I showed you, there was a bit of blending of colors. Um, but I do tend to like to stick with... <clears throat> certain shades. Now I think this one, because the section's getting smaller, I might just have this one be one color um, rather than blending it. We'll see how it goes. Maybe. Maybe not. I have this, <clears throat> the one I'm um, using right now is sort of a darker red, and I think maybe I'll just shift it into a lighter red. Or, I don't know, I think I'll keep this one, all this darker red, and maybe the next section will be the lighter red. We'll see. We'll see how I'm feeling when I get there. <clears throat> and one of the great things in Zentangles is you don't have to make up your mind about your artwork all at once. You don't even have to start with any sort of idea of what your artwork is going to turn out like in the end. You can just Make one decision at a time, execute one idea at a time, not even a full idea sometimes, it's just one singular stroke within that idea. So there's no need to go ahead and make sure you've got all the things planned ahead of time. So speaking of which, I'm thinking <clears throat> right after this red, um, I'm kind of wanting this brown color here. <clears throat> Maybe a little bit on this side, and then I think I'm going to shift <clears throat> to a lighter brown. <clears throat> and let the darker brown and lighter brown mingle a little bit, overlap a little bit. Still trying to leave a little bit of space for perhaps a shine the end. Maybe. We'll see how it goes once we start filling with color. <clears throat> and then, what do I want this last section to be? After a brown, I'm feeling like, <clears throat> I'm feeling like, hmm, perhaps a green. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going to start with a darker green over here in this in this section right here, and then shift over to a lighter green. <clears throat> Make it a little bit more bright. Now, the green and the red here are, are complementary colors, and, and they're separated by that brown, so it gives it a little bit of a distance. But still, like, even when I, when I don't deliberately think about it, I tend to go ahead and jump toward sort of comp using complementary colors more frequently. <clears throat> All right, and then we've got this little loop right here. <clears throat> and theoretically, it'll be like in the in the background a little. It's as if this section is <clears throat> looping back on itself. So I'm thinking I want something a little darker there. Um, and what do I have for that? I'm thinking I'll go with I have this dark blue, and then I might add some red to it as well. <clears throat> as if the blue were sort of the, the shadow, and then it's coming out of the shadow again. I don't know. 
we'll see how that works when I'm all done and if I like it. We'll find out. <clears throat> Alright, let's go on to the other side here. Alright, so I'm feeling like I do want a little bit more of, of green. <clears throat> Mm, you know, though, I think I want the green on this side. Yeah, right here. This is what I'm feeling. There we go. I like these pretty strong tiles because um, <clears throat> often, you know, I, I, I've never really felt intimidated by drawing strings. I've always felt pretty comfortable with just splashing some sort of line on the page. However, um, you know, there are some days I just don't want to think about it. And, and honestly, some of these strings are things that I would never think of on my own. So it was nice to sort of get some, some inspiration from these pre-strung tiles. It's the first time, I mean, I've worked with them a little bit, but I've never really <clears throat> purchased a pack, um, just of pre-strung tiles. So it was, it's nice to see, get some sort of inspiration. So on the other side of this green, hmm. <clears throat> on the other side of the green, I mean, I could put a lighter green. I don't want to put a yellow because I have this yellow right here. Um, a lighter green might be nice. Hmm. You know what I think I might do? It might do something maybe a little different in this one. And let the lighter green overlap, mingle a little bit with the darker green. And instead of leaving the shine in the middle, I might lay all of my watercolor on this one side and leave the rest of this side white. And it'll get filled in like once we start adding our water. And we'll just sort of drag some color over there, but it'll be more, more subtle. Um, so I think that's what I'm gonna wanna do. Yeah, nice green. Okay, next. Hmm. Well, I think to break my pattern of, um, <laughs> of always picking complementary colors, I'm going to choose not red. Um, however, I might choose something similar to red. Mm, or I might choose red. Oh, gosh. I'm leaning towards red. Okay, so I'm just going to let myself go with that. And I think I want to go just a little bit of red. And I kind of want to do like a... I want this whole section to be, this section right here, to be like a wash of warm colors. So I'm going to start with the red, and then I think I'll blend it into some orange and into some yellow. So we have three color transition here. And that way it's not all red <laughs> against the green. I feel that, um, you know, I've used like palette watercolors, I've used liquid watercolors and watercolor pencils, and I feel like each one gives a different sort of effect, a different sort of benefit. And I really enjoy um, these colored pencils, these watercolor pencils, in that I feel like you can you can really have a bit more control over <clears throat> where your where the color is going to be. Um, a tiny bit more control over where they're going to blend. Um, I tend to really, and I just like the color effect is so gentle um, when I add my water. Mm. So I've actually gone to from like a red to a darker orange, a lighter orange, and then onto a yellow. I think that'll turn out really nicely once. Once we add in our color, our water. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Yeah. So this kind of loops over into this over here. So I'm feeling like um, I'm feeling like that ought to be start like as a dark brown right here. And that's where it loops over and there'll be like a bit of a shadow. Mm -hmm. 
and then have that um, strangely enough I feel like adding a little bit of purple on top of that I don't know to make the shadow a bit more rich um, and then um, layer onto that some lighter brown And like we've done before, I just leave a little bit of white to perhaps <clears throat> add a bit of a shine later. We'll see once we add our watercolor, our water. Okay, <clears throat> and then we have this little section in the back right here. So I'm feeling like that is a good time for some just straight up purple, but then maybe moving into blue like a darker, a darker blue. <clears throat> All right. Okay. So we've got our sections colored with our watercolor pencils and our next step will be to go ahead and add our water. So I'll be right back in just a second with my water and my paintbrush. All right, so I've got my little bowl of water and my paintbrush. Um, when I'm adding water to my watercolor pencils, one of the rules I follow is making sure to let each section fully dry for painting in the next section. That way my colors from each section don't bleed into one another. And at this point, I'm just sort of letting the watercolor do the work. You know, we laid it down on the page and all I really need to do is let it sort of blend on its own this is where the, the magic kind of happens. The birds outside are chirping. It's so lovely. I'm really enjoying this these spring days when I'm waking up to the birds chirping. I do want to see a little bit more blending of that purple and blue, so I'm going to try, let's see how it happens, to maybe move some of this purple toward the blue and see what happens. Hmm. Now at this point we're just sort of adding this is just going to be like a wash in the background of our Zentangles. So I'm not fussed about any sort of perfection. Um, as I go and choose my next section, I'm going to skip this one here. That way it doesn't bleed into the one we just painted. I'm going to go over to my red section. As I move towards the, the white um, sort of shine area, I, I often will rinse my brush so that all the color that was picked up by painting the, the more darkened in section doesn't just override completely the whites that I've left. I wanted to sort of blend in there to be a bit more of a pink, but I don't want just one matte red color. So I do make sure to go ahead and rinse my brush whenever I feel like there's too much color loaded up on my brush. All right, I'm going to skip the brown section because it's right next to that red we just painted and go over to this green section at the end. 
And I want this dark green to sort of pull into the lighter green here. All right, and as I go and paint the white area, I just rinse right beforehand and then do a little bit of filling in there. There we go. Looking good. All right. So, continuing to do every other, I'm going to, oh, I think I do want to leave it like the other way. I'm going to go do this one here where we layered all that, the red and the orange and the yellow. Again, that this section, you've got to sort of be thoughtful about when you want to rinse your brush, you know, and use your judgment. Like if you feel the red or the orange is sort of taking over and you don't want that to completely um, negate the next color, the yellow, for example, go ahead and rinse right before you change to that new section. So I'm going to rinse again here so I don't completely overpower that light area with just yellow. I want a little bit of yellow in there, but I still want it to be a bit of a shine. There we go. Hmm, nice. The yellow really shows up <laughs> really bright on the, um, the camera screen. It's not so bright like that in real life. <laughs> All right, and then I think we'll just do this, this brown brown area right here. It touches a little bit right there with the yellow. You know, maybe I'm going to leave that <clears throat> and go back over to um, this section right here. It's between the first two that we did, so the other two should be dry enough that I should be all right, should be safe um, with painting this section in now. I love yellow. I always find that um, on my watercolors and colored pencils that yellow tends to run out faster. I often call yellow the most forgiving color. Um, it's just one of my favorites. I tend to add it all the time. All right, and I kind of want to get this yellow and the orange to blend a bit right there. But still leaving a bit of a shine. Again, the yellow looks so, I don't know if it's the, the lighting, the yellow looks so bright when in real life um, it's not that jarring. <laughs> but on the camera screen it is. Interesting. All right, moving on to this brown area here. I'm loading up a bunch of paint on the brush, so I'm going to rinse it before I move to the other side of the brown. And before I get to the shine, I'm going to rinse again. There we go. That section's looking nice. And then I'm going to do this little, um, I don't know, this like loop-de-loop background section that I was sort of questioning <clears throat> when I colored it, when I chose my colors. I think it'll work just the way it is, especially depending on like whatever Zentangle we choose to put in that little section. All right, let's move over to this green. I do love the contrast. I just love it. And I do like, as you can see here, I do tend to stick with just sort of this idea of rainbow colors. At one point, sometime soon, I want to try to do something monochromatic, <clears throat> looking at all different kinds of shades within one color to sort of get myself a little, to step away for a moment <laughs> um, from constantly doing sort of like a collection of rainbow colors. Um, but I do just, I like variety, so the rainbow colors are kind of nice. But monocolor or monochromatic is definitely, definitely on the list of things to do next. All right, we're getting there. Now this little section, this brown area here. 
I'm loading up a lot of paint on the brush. So before I get to the, <clears throat> the shine area, I'm going to go ahead and rinse. And then just drag in some color for the shine. <clears throat> All right, and there's that little, <clears throat> that little like blue purple area. I'm gonna wait just a moment and make sure that when I paint that area, because I am gonna, I think I'm gonna paint it before I know that the brown is fully dry. Um, but just make sure that I don't have a lot of water on my paintbrush when I go ahead to to paint that little section in. Just be really careful to try to not let the colors overlap there. I think that worked. There we go. All right, so my my shape is all painted, and I'm gonna let that fully and completely dry before I draw over it with ventangles. But for now, I think that's pretty good. I'll see you later for some drawing. <laughs>